why we made this shit last Pretty down to the wake up call to the sun grows cold to the making it down Judgment is what defines us so deep out of trees of judgment I'm back in your past day if I want to back
have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note. Please note. like that it's thursday night and you know what that means cheers to everybody out there because it's party time with the video bros i'm one half of the video bros i am bobby munson and that man right beside me my tag team partner partner in crime as they say the man with the angelic voice here it comes papa smokes how you doing papa smokes Oh, yeah, Munson, that was a good one. I'm doing great tonight. I'm wondering how all my wrestling people are doing tonight. Hopefully everyone's as pumped up as we are, because damn it, Papa Smokes, new MLW coming at us fast and furious on Pro Wrestling TV, and what a show that went down tonight. This was a good one, full of wrestling action. I am excited to talk about it, but before we get into all the MLW talk, a little bit of house cleaning, housekeeping. I think that's what it's called, housekeeping. That's what it's called. Hey, Slow down on the Guinness there, Bobby. Uh, but we're talking about uh, Rogue Energy. As you can see, the Rogue Affiliate scanned right up in the top of the corner there. You can see it right above Papa Smokes. Rogue Affiliate, RogueEnergy.com. You can add on over there. Use the promo code OLEPODS for 10% off if your order. What do they offer? Well, I'm going to tell you what they offer. They are a different type of energy drink. This is an alternative to what you'll find in the stores. So if you're looking for something that is low calorie, zero sugar, and vegan friendly, then Rogue Energy is the right stuff for you. It's got lots of tons of flavors, as many people within OLE have already said and be able to attest to, as well as they got swag. As you can see, our good friend Chris Parrish on stream lately here on our local establishment has been rocking his Rogue Energy hat so you can get swag, you can get energy drinks. Their energy drinks come in cans now, not just powder form. So scan that code right up there or follow the ticker down below for RogueEnergy.com, promo code OLEPODS, 10% off of your order. And you can have energy just like me because Pops, folks, boom, I'm fired up. It's time to go. It's rocking time with MLW Fusion. And we got... Our good friend Astrid in the chat. Astrid saying hello. Astrid, good evening. Looking forward to finding all about Impact Wrestling that I know you're watching because you and Cody Defoe are going to be following up with making an impact. And hey, speaking of Astrid and something MLW related, Pop Smokes, you can go check out one of the recent episodes or the most recent episodes, I believe, of Astrid Asks, where she interviewed Billy Starks, who's going to be making her debut for MLW. So this is a big get for MLW and Definitely go check out Astrid's latest video. That interview with Billy Starks is straight fire pops, folks. How, how are we doing? We're, we ready to talk MLW? What do you want to chat about? You want to talk about Billy Starks for a minute? What we think uh, her joining the featherweight division of MLW? Hey, sure, man. And I've been wanting to get that featherweight di division going and off its feet for a while now. Some uh, months back, they made an attempt there. They had Holla Dead. They had a few other uh, good wrestlers. And then... Uh, it, it kind of lost some steam, so uh, we'll see what happens in the future. But Billy Starks are a real good grab for MLW. Sure is. And look who we got joining us week after week once again. Antti Wuji joining us in the chat. Thank you so much for all the love and support and stopping here to party with the Video Bros every Thursday night. We love it. Speaking of which, hey, you know what? We got PPW coming up very soon, Pop Spokes, on December the 10th. And I think it's going to be time coming up here for another episode of The Bro Show. I think we need to lay something out here, get a very special guest, talk about some PPW. There was a, there was a big match announced. We're going to get El Asesino versus Colton Kelly Part 2. Oh, yeah. We need to reach out to El Asesino and see if he wants to 
come talk to the video bros on the bro show and find out his thoughts about Colton Kelly and get inside his mind for a little bit. Okay, that's a great idea for an interview, but it's already making me nervous to have to talk to the Mexican devil. I, God only knows what he'll say on our podcast. Yeah, well, it's a good thing that we have no restrictions. That's for damn sure. If we're going to fight in El Asesino, I wouldn't want it any other way than the truth coming right out of his mouth. Uh, we're going to dig deep and find that out. Hopefully, we can set that up sometime soon here, Papa Spokes. But in the meantime, and in between time, as a famous man once said, we got some MLW Fusion to cover because, whoo, we got three matches on this card. We got a lot of buildup for next week because they've got MLW Fusion on Thanksgiving next Thursday night at Two title matches next week, Pop Spokes. They're just throwing out these belt matches all over the place. This is going to be big. Uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. But we started this stuff off with tag team match right off the hop for MLW Fusion tonight. And, oh, Andy, would you? Ooh, yeah, you bet. Yeah, we're, we'll make that stuff happen. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> we're gonna, it'll happen real soon. Um, but, yeah, we got tag team action right off the hop. And they immediately announced Los Maximos, one of the original tag teams of MLW. I think they said it back there shortly after the opening of the MLW doors some 20 years ago. Joel and Jose Maximos. And they really talked about the accolades of these two guys, getting a little bit more familiar, uh, finding out what the SAT on the back of their shirt means, that it actually stands for <laughs> Spanish Announce Team, which I thought was a nice little touch there. Um, but found out more about them. But in the meantime, we also got... Our boys, Lance and Hawaii, Juicy Finale, the Samoan SWAT team. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of meat in this ring here tonight, Pop Spokes. <laughs> and this was a beautiful way to start off MLW Fusion. What were your thoughts on this? For sure. When I saw Los Maximos come out, I thought, okay, we got a tank match brewing here. And then when our buddies, the Samoan SWAT team, came out with Big Juicy and our friend now, Lance and Hawaii, that was just a great moment. I, I, I feel so much closer to some of these guys now that we've had conversations with them, so I root for them even more. And just glad to see them get a tag match on Fusion. Uh, we talked to Lance about uh, the tag team division in MLW. It's, it's pretty stiff. We don't know who's around exactly for this new season quite yet, but um, a lot of stiff competition out there. And uh, just glad to see the, the boys get a match on TV against some game opponents in Los Maximos. Yeah, and what a, I mean, this was a good back and forth matchup as well, too. Maximos really took the fight to both Lance and to Juicy, but a lot of good back and forth and a lot of great tandem maneuvers from both teams here. Uh, one of the great spots was near the end. Again, Los Maximos going for that double Spanish fly that they've been uh, well known for for a long time, that tandem maneuver from the top rope to Lance out Hawaii. But Juicy getting in there, making sure that he puts a stop to it, and he grabs both guys up for a double Samoan drop on Los Maximos. And man, what a Samoan drop that was. Those two boys hit down hard. Lance hits that frog splash from the top. It is all said and done. And the Samoan SWAT team coming out with a massive victory here tonight. And yeah, you said that that spot at the end with Juicy and the both Los Maximos up on his back. He delivered that quite perfectly. The bump was was beautiful, and he went right to the middle of the ring. But good God, that was a lot of weight in one spot in the middle of the ring at once. I, I, I feared for the integrity of the bottom of those ring boards there. But, uh, man, what a what a blast. The, the sound for the live fans just must have been outrageous, that, that huge bump in the middle. And uh, spectacular win for Samoan SWAT team. Glad to see them getting some TV time. And... I hope they start moving up the tag team ranks. We should see them getting a shot at some point. I agree. I can't wait to see that happen. And again, it was great seeing Lance out there. And what a long way he's come. When you start to look at Lance that we saw in Battle Riot Part 1 and the progression that he's had since then, Lance is on to something. I think that this guy is going to go a lot further. He's still very, very young. What a great human being, first of all, and a great mind for the business at the same time after speaking to him. I want nothing more but for lance to go straight to the top i really do think he's on he's gonna go there I, I have nothing but respect for the entire family in general i i was happy to see him out there and see where he's come so far awesome and i think this uh small faction the samoan swat team will be a good thing for him too and for juicy as well i think just to get some experience around uh, a guy like jacob fatu and uh and to just um, have each other to lean on and uh, to to make it a make it a go as a three man faction. 
I think it's good for all those guys. They'll 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 be helped in their development uh, in Samoan SWAT team. And they could be holding all the gold too. Could you imagine if the Samoan SWAT team and Juicy and Lance go on to win tag gold, and you got Jacob Fatu in line for a world championship matchup now that he's won the battle riot. So we very well could see sometime in this season all members of the Samoan SWAT team holding gold in MLW. That's a crazy thought, but but not uh, unreasonable at all, and uh, I think there's a good possibility that could happen. I'm looking forward to finding out what goes down. Great win for the Samoan SWAT team, and it became promo time after that, Papa Smokes, before we'd get back to in-ring action. But we started that promo time with a man who's returning after three years of being out of MLW. We're talking about Mance Warner. Mance is very, very pissed off by the sounds of it. He is none too happy about the about Mads Kruger and the treatment of him inside the battle riot. These two have got something going down between the two of them. A couple of big men. And speaking of big men, look at the, the big personality of Chris Parrish joining us up in here tonight. Mr. Parrish, how you doing, sir? Thanks for coming in and joining us. Party time. Come on in anytime. Love to have you. Um, but yeah, Mance Warner, he's, he, he's, he's drinking beer and he's pissed off. I think I, has he even left the bar since last week. I think he's still at the same Say bar, all everybody else has left him, but he's still left there talking about how pissed off he is at old Mads Kruger and how he's gonna find some sort of concoction to do with him in the ring, whether it's put him through a flaming table or through light bulbs, all that deathmatch crap. I could do without, but he wants to fight him and he wants to go to war with mods. And then he goes, I need another beer. He pulls the beer out of his out of his pocket, nonetheless, it puts it on the countertop. And what happens right then is Microman pops up from behind the bar, tries to steal Mance Warner's beer away from him. And Mance stops him, takes out a second beer, cracks both of them, goes to him, look, I don't know if I've ever met you. I don't know if I've ever fought you. But you come in here when I'm all pissed off and try to steal old Mance's beer away from him. That takes some balls. And I like you. Cheers to that. This this was fun. I liked this. This it started off with a good promo. I like Mance Warner, and I like the little tiny touch with Microman. I've said it again. If this is the direction they're going to go with Microman, I can handle this. This this is solid. This is a funny way to use them. Yeah, you make a good point there. I think rather than uh, all out matches with Microman, he should be a personality that appears in some of their skits and some of their segments. In a comical fashion, which is fine. I, I find it a little bit weird that Mance goes from the southern psychopath that's talking about all the violence he's going to do to the lunatic Mads Kruger and then turns around and does a comedy spot with the midget luchador. But, I mean, okay, it, it still was funny, and I still think that's probably the better way to use Microman. Seems like everyone's getting along with Microman backstage these days. That's right. Everybody wants a piece of Microman, whether it's wanting to take him out if you're Cesar Duran or whether you want to be his best friend like most of the roster. Microman sure has made a mark on MLW since joining them. And hopefully, again, too, if he does have something coming up, I have been working to try to get Mr. St. Laurent, the one who brought Microman in, to join us on a future episode of Fusion. And we have worked it out. So that is going to be coming up soon. I just got to figure out the details of when we're going to see Microman in a match capacity, and we're going to work it out to have Mr. St. Laurent joining us right here on Fusion. That is going to be one hell of an interview. And we're going to have a lot more interviews coming up for you guys as the season progresses here in MLW. Uh, lots going down too, Papa Smokes. A lot of things in the current happenings as well. I mean, big news, the Billington brothers there have officially signed full-time contracts with MLW. So again, another big get for MLW, a couple of young up-and-comers. All sorts of shit that we're going to get to see as this goes on. Um, but soon we're going to get to see Mods Kruger taking on Mance Warner. We're not sure when, but we know it's coming up soon. Uh, up next, we had a promo from Myron Reed, the young goat, just talking about, in general, his thoughts on Davey Richards, about joining the Bomae Fight Club, just giving his thoughts in general, when all of a sudden he sees Calvin Tankman in the background, and he calls Calvin over, and he starts talking to Calvin Tankman and telling him, like, hey, man, you were the draft pick. You were the one who was originally supposed to be in the Bull Maia Fight Club. Why are you choosing to side with guys like EJ? How come you don't want to join the Bull Maia Fight Club? The counter to this, Calvin Tangman uh, reminds Young Goat. He tells him, look, these are the guys that screwed me out of the Opera Cup. They busted me open. All this kind of stuff. And you were there by my side at the time. How could you betray me? Which then Myron plants the seed. 
you want to talk about betrayal. How about what Nduka did to you in the battle riot? And the seed has now been planted, Papa Smokes. It seems like Myra Reed getting inside the head of Calvin Tankman and trying to try to just put that wedge between the tag champs. Yeah, and he also said, Don't you ever wonder where EJ and Duca gets that fancy car and those that that expensive wristwatch that he's always wearing? You think that's a coincidence? Like so yeah, he's really going deep there, and uh, we got some plot line developing here, and uh, uh, whether or not it's smoke and mirrors by the Balmaye Fight Club, or if there's any reality to it, will uh, have to be seen in the future, but interesting for now, and uh, you can definitely see some friction between the tag team champions, and Duca and Tankman. Could Duca be going Balmaye for all we know down the road? Maybe they're planning the yeah. seed to get to Kelvin, and there could be betrayal. Anything could happen. We never quite know. We know that it sounds like, even from talking to him, Alex Cade and Mr. Thomas not opposed to the idea of the Beaumaye Fight Club expanding down the road. So we could see expansion throughout this season from the Beaumaye Fight Club. And from talking to both the guys you just mentioned, Mr. Thomas and Alex Cade, we got the strong impression that they're – uh, they're a matched pair. They aren't ever breaking up those two. So we know that they're they're completely uh, 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 committed to each other in the Bomae Fight Club. So there's no friction between those two. Exactly. So at the heart of it is still the two original members of the Bomae Fight Club, no matter what. But it sounds like they're just going to continue to grow and continue to become more powerful. And the MLW locker room should be on notice immediately. From there, we got a recap from last week when Taya Valkyrie was attacked from behind by Brittany Blake. Uh, we then went to a promo where Taya Valkyrie is still a little bit choked up, from it showing her immediately after the attack had occurred. She's been beaten down on the throat and stuff like that, so she can't quite talk properly. Gives a promo, says that if Brittany Blake wanted the championship match, that she should have asked for the championship match. So the fight is on, and it's going to go down next Thursday night on MLW on Thanksgiving, the traditional MLW on Thanksgiving episode. We're going to have the MLW Featherweight Championship match, Taya Valkyrie defending against Brittany Blake. Your thoughts on this, Papa Smokes? Well, I suppose Brittany Blake could have come up and asked for a title shot, but uh, I, th I still think in professional wrestling, the better way to do it is come out and slap the champion in the mouth, put him down to the ground, give him a few boots in the ribs, and uh, let them know that you're there. That way you got a hot match coming up. You sure do, and that's going to be taking place next week. And another one that's going to be taking place next week that ties into the very next promo they played is going to be the World Heavyweight Championship match. It is a Falls Count Anywhere matchup. Alexander Hammerstone taking on Richard Holiday. It's part two of the Dynasty fight for the championship next week, Thanksgiving. U.S. Thanksgiving, mind you, for all our Canadian fans. Um, this is going to be off the hook, Papa Spokes. This is going to be one hell of a fight between these two guys, and I am not sure where it's going to go. I, I start to get the impression, I, and I said this to you earlier while we were watching the show, maybe the wrench is going to be that Holiday wins the belt, and he goes into the program with Jacob Fatu for the World Heavyweight title, as opposed to Hammer versus Fatu Part 2 that everybody is currently thinking is going to be on the plate. Yeah, we don't know, but uh, I, I think Richard Holiday is a completely believable number one contender, uh, so to speak, at this point anyway. I guess Jacob Fatu, uh, having won the battle riot, gets the next title shot uh, after this. But um, I've always thought uh, Holiday was such a good challenger for Hammerstone. The last match they had was an absolute classic that's probably the best match of Hammerstones I've ever seen was against Holiday, a uh, close second to against Fatu, I suppose. But these two, uh, Holiday and Hammerstone, work very, very well together. They're both incredible talents. I really uh, admire the skill of uh, Richard Holiday, both in the ring and as a promo. And I think he's the guy for the job right at this time. This Falls Count Anywhere match will make it very interesting, too. I suppose we'll see them all out throughout the crowd and at ringside and all that stuff. But, again, I think this favors Holiday because he can uh, get away with more uh, bending of the rule book uh, in the Falls Count Anywhere scenario outside of the ring. Yeah, and just to think that of all weeks, this week in general, Pop Smokes, 
all three original members of the dynasty are involved in championship gold matchups. So you know that uh, MJF finally getting the track of the AEW championship this coming weekend against John Moxley. And if he doesn't win that match, I'm hanging up my uh, fandom as a pro wrestling fan because God damn it. If AEW doesn't pull the plug on MJF already, I quit. Um, <laughs> with that being said, Oh, to you, Mr. Parrish. Um, uh, I think it's cool that not only is MJF getting his opportunity, but we get part two of the dynasty fallout between Hammer and Richard Holiday. This is a great week for those original three, and all three of those guys absolutely love their work. What, can't wait to watch all of this. Uh, but up next, uh, we had Alicia and Holiday in a black and white shot monochrome video backstage or in front of, I think it was a backdrop of the New York City skyline, in fact. Um, so this was this was a cool effect, and Holiday starts laying it down why he is going to destroy Alexander Hammerstone, why he is better than Alexander Hammerstone. He says, "I could take you anywhere. We're in New York City. I'm going to take you out to the streets. We're going to fight on the out on the bridge. We're going to or the Brooklyn Bridge. We're going to go and fight under the Statue of Liberty, and then I'm going to take your ass over to 52nd Street, where they're going to be taking the paparazzi all around you." Flash and photography as I cover your ass one, two, three, and become the new MLW champion. Holiday cuts a hell of a promo, and I love this. Yeah, he sure does. And, you know, I thought last time they, they didn't get enough mileage out of this feud because uh, the it was a long breakup of the dynasty. They, they were a faction for a long time. Then it took them a long time to break up. But then we've only seen the one match between Holiday and Hammerstone, so... There had to be, a, you know, wrestling's all about rematches. It, it had to be a, a few more rematches, hopefully a few more at the very least. And uh, this Falls Count Anywhere in New York City is going to be awesome. I can't wait for this next week. And I love it when there's a world championship match as the main event for Fusion. Yeah, and I hope that anybody out there, go check out Pro Wrestling TV where you can catch MLW Live. It's absolutely free. It runs seamlessly. Uh, you know, a lot of people were complaining that it's like, oh, why take it away from YouTube? This is the same kind of idea, only it's just that much easier to find. You click on one channel, you take it right to your wrestling action. Kudos to Pro Wrestling TV and the job they're doing over there, Papa Smokes. I like this for, for MLW. I think this is a great fit. Yeah, it's awesome. And you know me, Munson. I'm not the most uh, computer uh literate guy in the entire world but uh when i heard that mlw was going over to it downloaded the app bing bang boom everything's there there's a whole menu of all the shows they have they even have some documentaries and some other cool uh programming on there but a bunch of other wrestling shows we were talking about that warrior wrestling uh, uh while we were watching mlw tonight and that looks like it has some pretty good stuff on it so all kinds of back catalog there for various wrestling leagues all kinds of women's wrestling if that's your thing there there's a ton of stuff for everybody so i i recommend checking it out yeah they've got all sorts of options there so definitely check them out and they also bring you mlw which is where we continue our action in the second matchup of the night we kind of got double crossed in this one and when i say that i mean that we got matt cross taking on killer cross and the jokes did not stop there on the commentators whether it's Double cross, getting caught in the crossfire, it didn't matter. Or whether it was the fans say, fuck them. What was it? Fuck them up, cross. Fuck them up. That was the chant. Yeah. yeah. Mean, this this had jokes written all over it. But at the same time, this was, this was nice. This wasn't a match that overshadowed the opener, and it didn't overshadow the main event. But it wasn't boring either. This was exactly where it needed to be on the card. It was the exact pacing that I expected it to be at. These two put on a really nice show. Uh, we had the smoke show, Scarlet Bordeaux in the corner of Killer Cross down there. Everything was put on display. Matt Cross getting in the, his stuff, but at the same time, Killer Cross. I especially love that spot where Matt Cross is doing the flips to get him in the corner and Cross catching him right then and just giving him that stare down right to his eyes. You could see the look on Matt Cross' face like, oh, shit, I'm done at this point. And from there, all hell breaks loose for Matt Cross. Yeah, th this was a good match. It, you and I have uh, admired Matt Cross's work before. He's a journeyman. He's he's uh, he's got his stuff that he likes to do. It's pretty cool. It looks good. He, he never makes a mistake or anything like that. He's perfect. But uh, he was in tough against uh, the big giant uh, Killer Cross, and like you say, the presentation of Cross is just. 
quite excellent, especially with Scarlet by his side. They make a very striking duo. And uh, boy, Cross's body, he's getting even more muscular. Hey, he's getting bigger than he used to be. He was always pretty big, but he's he's packing it on now, and it, it looks good at, at, for such a tall guy as well. But at any rate, uh, yeah, half of it, I think, is really a, a, just the presentation, the entrance and everything. She looks divine in her outfit and all that kind of stuff, and uh, they're really just a visual spectacle to behold. And I just want to take this time to commemorate the career of Killer Cross and Scarlet Bordeaux in MLW as we see them for the last time on MLW. Cheers to you guys. <laughs> but, I mean, all, all fun and games. It, it, it's unfortunate we won't see them in MLW, but we know for a fact that right after these tapings was when that uh, Triple H couldn't resist bringing them back to the WWE. And kudos to him for doing it. And again, you got these two have star quality written all over them, especially as a package duo, the way that they're presented. Uh, this just works. And even I was saying to you as we were watching this program, Scarlet continues to impress me more and more each time kind of thing. You, you think you don't know that much about her, but when you start to, it's not disappointing. She actually does good work out there. Yeah, and she has kind of a star-like quality about her too. She's very good looking and all that, but it, it's not just that. She has a presence about her and she interacts with him. They have a I don't know, an aura or a kind of a little power together that just really looks good, and uh, they should keep them together, I think, at all costs. And yes, and Chris Parrish, we got some Bulldogs at MLW. Yes, we did. We did mention that. The the Billingtons have signed for MLW, and they're going to be working there full-time, again, adding to the tag division in MLW. So it's, again, all sorts of signings all over the place for MLW, just continuing to build that roster. And again, Court Bauer loving family legacies over in MLW loves to pay respect to that. And that's really good to see. And speaking of people that are signed or that we knew they had already signed, we know that this guy has had a matchup in MLW already, but we have yet to see it. So this is the promo package for the coming soon debut of one Shun Skywalker coming out of Dragon's Gate. Uh, so I know zero about Shun Skywalker, but this small little video package showed us his accolades, winning Rookie of the Year, the championships that he has held over in Japan. The presentation of this particular video package, I went, hmm, I didn't know much about Sean Skywalker, but now I want to know a bit more about Sean Skywalker. They did an excellent job of putting this piece together, if you ask me. Yeah, it, it was an exciting little promo piece, and uh, and some of the, the, the vignettes they have are very high in, uh, in uh, production value, but... Uh, uh, aside from that, I don't know anything about Shun Skywalker either. I've heard his name a few times, but I have not seen a full match. The clips of the matches they show in this look pretty spectacular. He looks excellent, and uh, this is more of that uh, international flavor that we like to see. And I, I like to see wrestlers I've never seen before, especially from other parts of the world and all that, because they have uh, different influences and uh I like to see what's going on in other promotions in other parts of the world. So I'm looking forward to Shun Skywalker. Yeah, me too, man. It's going to be a great debut. That's going to be coming up very soon. Uh, next, we go to a promo from Davey Richards uh, being asked about his thoughts on uh, Alex Cade. We got the big championship matchup coming up in the main event. So Davey Richards lays it down about how Alex Cade needs to worry about it this time. These two had a match previously that went the distance. This went right to the time limit. The last two that these these guys fought each other, there was ten minutes allotted. Davey couldn't get the time get it done within the time limit, but he did take Alex Cade the full distance. Alex Cade is going to have to watch himself. I mean, we we. Love us some Alex Kane, but damn, he's up against stiff competition at Davey Richards. And from this promo, Davey's one fired up dude. Yeah, and we've seen Davey Richards for his entire run in MLW in, in over the past year. He takes no prisoners. He, he takes it seriously that he's the American Wolf and he's on the hunt all the time. And uh, he, you can see that he never really felt comfortable without having some kind of gold around his waist in MLW. So, uh, he had a shot at Hammerstone. He, did, he was unsuccessful in winning that. And uh, the open weight title is the next logical step for him. And uh, a very game opponent in Alex Kane. But uh, Davey Richards will come in with a, a similar kind of collegiate wrestling style kind of thing with lots of uh, suplexes and all that. But uh, 
He's got a lot more experience than Alex Kane. And as we saw in their last matchup, Kane better have eyes on the back of his head because he's in for a tough one tonight. Yeah, he sure is. And we're going to get to that very shortly. Uh, right after this promo pop smokes, they started talking about the Opera Cup. And I was getting excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to get an announcement. Opera Cup 2023. Or, uh, yeah, because they did 20. It was 2022. It was earlier this year. We got the 2022. So I would imagine that this one would fall into 2023 for sure. I would have. I was thinking, here we go. We're going to get some sort of announcement. It's coming up in January, February kind of thing. Not quite. So if we recall earlier last year, the MLW Opera Cup was stolen from Davey Richards. He was attacked backstage and the cup's stolen and they haven't been able to find it. They said they are now, this many months later, opening an investigation into the whereabouts of the MLW Opera Cup. And if you have any knowledge of where this might be, to reach out to the authorities at MLW immediately to let them know because... Where in the world is that damn Opera Cup, Papa Smokes, and who took it? Get it back here so we can have that tournament back on television. Well, I liked your idea that the Samoan SWAT team have it in their shopping cart out in the uh, <laughs> back parking lot and are going to sell it for 50 bucks. But uh, If so, put it on reserve. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I know that you were also unsatisfied with the with that how that happened too because you had some various theories about the uh, Opera Cup too and uh, it, which still you might be proven right in the future here too. I know that you're uh, concerned about that, so we'll see. We'll see, months, and you might you might have been right about that all along. Hey, I put Alex Kane on the spot during the interview and asked him the question. I I posed the question. He didn't quite want to answer it. He's a he's a good dude. He came on our show, and I have the utmost respect for him. But something inside me tells me that you know Mr. Kane might be uh, holding a little bit more silverware than what uh, he's leading on. Yeah, he looked a little surprised when you asked him <laughs> to, but he's kept the poker face. So I don't know. I, I'm not sure, but uh, time's going to tell me. We'll see if you get your redemption, Munson. We'll find out soon enough, I'm sure, because I'm certain we're going to get to see another uh, version of the Opera Cup coming up soon. And for those of you that are tuning in, not familiar with the Opera Cup, uh, this is a cup that dates back to the uh, the olden days when uh, wrestling was held in to the, the uh, opera houses uh, of old. Uh, last being won by Stu Hart, I believe. Uh, what what was the year, Pop Smokes, that Stu Hart won? 1940-something, I think. Yeah, I believe so. And so after that, it basically was retired and kept in the Hart family household for all those years inevitably being found by Davy Boy Smith Jr., who brought it uh, before MLW and had the same people who work on the Stanley Cup year after year get that thing all prepared and ready for television. And that has become a new staple of MLW year after year is to hold the Opera Cup tournament like they used to have back in the day. Yeah, and we've had a good time with this too. Uh, obviously, that's right up my alley. Uh, an, an old school tournament being brought back to life uh, something from the, like you said, the old opera houses of Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, New York, Chicago, back in the 30s and 40s. And uh, it, it was a prestigious uh, title to win or, or a tournament to win. So I really like uh, MLW's idea of reviving this, just having a small uh, eight man or, a, yeah, it's a six man or eight man tournament to uh, for the Opera Cup. And uh, we've had two or three of them now three i think hey because uh, harry smith won the first one then uh uh filthy tom lawler won the second one and then uh, davy richards the third one so that's right and uh, of course uh filthy tom lawler there the uh, absolute favorite of one mel ball collins here from our <laughs> local establishment uh, never gonna let her live that down so just gonna keep that train rolling but uh yeah it's it's been one from some very prestigious wrestlers so far and i would love to see the new version of the mlw opera cup taking place especially with a lot of young blood can you imagine the billingtons could be involved in an opera cup tournament uh at some point like it's just a lot that could happen with the legacy that's behind that cup to begin with and it would just be sweet to see i can't wait to find out how that all goes down papa spokes it's going to be one hell of a ride uh, but yes uh from there after that whole thing we got a backstage segment with alexander hammerstone coming out of uh, a dressing room or something of the sort confronted by one ej and duca who seemed really really ticked off with the champion saying that he's been trying to get a hold of him for a championship matchup and all this kind of jazz and not getting the calls feels like hammer has been ducking him 
Hammer then defends himself by saying it's Cesar Duran who is causing the problems. He's making the matchups. He's the one not allowing EJ to have his championship matchup. And uh, that's why uh, Holiday has been pushed ahead of EJ and Duca in the rankings. Uh, just as EJ goes to fire back with something else, we all of a sudden hear commotion coming out of the room beside them. And all of a sudden, Hammer goes running into the room. And there is somebody laid out just like Bud Heavy had been done last week. And just like last week, a calling card has been left on the body. This is a black card with a, what looks like a triangle and a circle on it. And Hammer starts confronting Cesar right then and there. Is this you? Is this you? And Cesar looks very, very confused about the whole situation and says, this one has nothing to do with me. And as much of a snake as what Cesar Duran can be, I tend to think he might be telling the truth about this one. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here, but we saw Bud Heavy knocked out in the uh, mop room last week. And that little card, yeah, it looks like little symbols or it almost looks like a V and an O on there. So I was trying to think of what that would mean. I don't know yet. Maybe it's the calling card of someone new that has yet to debut here or uh, maybe somebody we already know. I don't know, but uh, more intrigue in the back and uh, showing that the, the back area of MLW is sometimes the most dangerous area. Yeah, it sure is. So it's going to be interesting to see what unfolds from all of that. Uh, so that was Every single promo that we had, all the buildup that we had, everything that led, uh, leads us to the very moment that we're at here on the show, here on uh, Fusion. It's time, Pop Spokes, and I've been waiting to do this since last week. It's time for the main event of the evening. This match scheduled for one fall and is for the National Open Weight Championship of the World. Nice, nice. I like the way you drew out world as well. <laughs> I like how the announcer on this one drew out Davy Richards' name throughout this thing. Yeah, he really held that note on Davy. I mentioned it as it goes, Davy Richards. That, that nice guy's a doing. champ. Yeah, ah, I love him. I think it's so good. The sports presentation of this is absolutely fantastic and one of the best things about mlw they take their titles very seriously and this match has been well built well prepared we're going to get to see it alex kane the suplex assassin taking on the american wolf davy richards man does richards ever have a bad match the answer is no definitely not since coming to mlw and this match was something pops folks this match was something even better than the last encounter that they had and something different at the same time you had some of the start of it the back and forth going at each other, and that Davey locking a lot of the ground submissions and stuff like that. Went to a little bit of a break, came back. Alex Kane now with the advantage on Davey Richards, giving him a bit of a beat down to the outside, getting that frog splash on the hard part of the apron to Davey Richards. And they kind of turned to the crowd and starting to go give him the bow my A, bow my A. And that's when Mr. Thomas on the outside turns him around, Focus on the opponent and get on top of him because they are the whole oh, man, Mr. Thomas, <laughs> getting right in there and telling Alex Kane what to do. This Hell is yeah. hot up in here. This was awesome. That was so cool. Yeah, a really good little moment that one of the ringside uh, videographers picked up on. But uh, yeah, this I, I I agree with you. I love the way these uh, championship matches are treated like big sport events on MLW. The the ring announcer announces them differently than he does the other matches. There's a special reverence kind of put on the title match, and it makes it feel special for the viewer, right? You know that you're not just seeing some other match or, or the last match of the evening, and it's just one of the other matches. They make it special. They make you know that it means something and that and that uh, the opponents are, are completely invested in uh, attacking and destroying each other. This is what you want to see. So, uh, yeah, kudos to MLW for actually making sports presented, uh, sports presented uh, professional wrestling. Yeah, you bet. And then again, this was a pure wrestling match for most of the matchup too. A lot of suplexes, a lot of back and forth, lots of submissions. Uh, many times that Alex Kane actually got the upper hand on Davey Richard having a counter to Davey Richards' many submission holds and then being able to hammer out suplex after suplex on his opponent. It seemed like Alex Kane was a lot more prepared this time around for Davey Richards, or so it would seem anyway, as 
as we thought Alex Kane was maybe getting the upper hand, starting to get the better of David Richards, suddenly Davey hit another gear altogether like he tends to do. And he was unstoppable from there. And he hammered out maneuver after maneuver and covered after every single one until finally after that last powerbomb maneuver that he placed on Alex Kane, rolled up the cover, one, two, three, and new MLW National Openweight Champion, Davey Richards, again, this one was spoiled for us a little bit back in the summertime when Davey Richards was shown uh, in pictures with the championship, showing up on other programs with it. We did know what the outcome was going to be. Again, did not spoil the matchup itself for me, though. This one was a banger. I love this matchup, Papa Smokes. Well done. Very well done. Yeah, can't agree with you more. And uh, I think if I hadn't encountered spoilers for this match, it would have been even more enjoyable. But the thing is, I... I, I don't think I would have predicted uh, Richards to go over in this match. I I, I, I kind of thought that uh, Kane had a good thing going with uh, the National Open Week Championship. So I thought, yeah, they'll keep him around for a while. Maybe him and uh, Davey Richards will do a program together. And maybe in their, you know, fourth or fifth or seventh match against each other, Richards will take the belt or something. I could have seen that. But a little bit surprising right off the bat. It, 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 a pretty long match, a 14-minute match or something like that, and uh, nice and competitive back and forth. Um, started with Richards kind of baby-facing it up and doing some good wrestling. They went to uh, uh, when Alex Kane got started to build a lot of heat on Davy Richards with some of that out-of-the-ring action, and then back with uh, some back and forth after that. This was just a classically laid-out match. Nothing fancy in the in the booking or the layout of the match whatsoever, but uh, completely effective. And uh, uh, in the closing moments of that match, Davey Richards uh, had a nice combination of maneuvers and holds that he used to weaken Alex Kane for that pinfall. He used a, that trailer hitch leg lock. That had Kane screaming in pain pretty bad. He trapped him in uh, the sort of Kurt Angle style ankle lock that that uh, is a favorite move of Davy Richards, and then yeah, that that kind of power bomb uh, or it was like a package pile driver type thing that he gave Alex Kane, and that was it, man. A, a clean one two three in the middle of the ring. You could see uh, Kane and the rest of the Bomaye Fight Club not pleased about that after the match, and there's a little bit of heat continued after afterwards as well. Yeah, there sure was. Uh, the, you got the stare down from the young goat Myron Reed at the top of the ramp there, and that's what got me thinking, and I mentioned this <clears> as we were watching it. I'm starting to wonder if maybe they're leaning towards inevitably having Myron Reed in the hunt for the MLW national open weight championship because we know that it was Myron Reed who turned on Davey Richards at the end of the conclusion of the previous match between Kane and uh, Davey Richards uh, before. So it makes me think as the stare down is happening, could we inevitably see the young go going against Davey Richards down the line here for the national open weight championship? And could the young goat end up winning his second, like, I mean, yeah, he's three time low weight champion, but second, different championship within the MLW ranks. I think that the possibility is there. Myron Reed's been putting in the work for years with MLW, always impressing, always sharp in what he does. I could see him as a national overweight champion. Yeah, me also. And I think that's a good prognostication because uh, Reed has been one of their uh, long time employees, one of their main uh, talent guys on their roster. He's been there for, it has to be four years or more now, which is quite a long time for a guy in a wrestling company, I think. And uh, you can see that they have trust in him and that they uh, they appreciate the talents of Myron Reed, as you and I have talked about him for several years on this podcast as well. He's done nothing but improve the whole time. He was really quite excellent when we first started watching him, but he's even way better than that now. So I think that's a good idea. Don't don't leave them uh, in the middleweight division forever. They've got a whole ton of good middleweights in MLW, so maybe get that belt uh, on somebody else. One of the luchadors or one of the uh, Dragon Gate Japanese guys might be good, and but there's a whole bunch of uh, 
worthy guys that could uh, put on some good programs around that middleweight title. Yeah, a lot of great things could be happening coming up very soon for MLW. I can't wait to see what goes down uh, in the future. But we got a lot to unpack for next week, Pops, folks. It's it's MLW on Thanksgiving. And while we're past Thanksgiving here in Canada, our good friends down south in the United States are going to be celebrating next Thursday night. And I think there's no better way to celebrate our Thursday night than to uh, – have a little few uh, few pops with uh, a few of our friends from the U.S. So we, we're putting it out there right now. All of you that live in the U.S., if you've got time next Thursday night and you want to come party with the video bros, we'll do like an honorary, honorary Thanksgiving. You come in the chat. If you want to come on screen and party with us, you got a beer in hand, you just want to hang out with the bros while we talk about MLW, personal invite to anybody, whether you work for MLW, whether you're a fan on the side, I don't care. I just want to have a good Beer drinking night next Thursday night with you, Pop Smokes, and all of our loyal fans and anybody else who wants to join. For sure. I like that invitation, and I, I want to take it one step further to any of our uh, American friends uh, celebrating Thanksgiving. You you can show up, but you have to bring turkey and also those those uh, pureed yams. I like those, oh, too. Oh, those are delicious. Yeah, oh, man. It's making me hungry here, Pop Smokes. I'm getting the munchies. I mean, I mean uh, is that the right word? Yeah, screw it. We're Canadian. Yeah, I'm getting the goddamn munchies at this point. <laughs> yes. You know, if I haven't already, I've had one beer. I've had one bowl. I've had two beers. I've had two bowls. It's a fun night on Thursday nights, but you're hanging out with the video bros, and that's why we want to invite you next Thursday to join us here as we talk about MLW on Thanksgiving. Two big title matches, the MLW Featherweight Championship match between Brittany Blake and Taya Valkyrie, and then the World Heavyweight Championship matchup is the fallout of the Dynasty Part 2, Richard Holiday, Alexander Hammerstone, Falls Count Anywhere, chaos is going to ensue, it's going to be a hell of a night, it's going to be a fun time, but Papa Smokes, we got... Our good friends coming up on making an impact here very shortly. So we want to encourage you all to go over there. I don't think we're going to see out the time long enough to be able to raid the channel for them. But hey, go check out Astra Pizarro on Twitch and make sure to follow her and check out making an impact tonight as they talk all things impact wrestling. Papa Smokes, these people here, they want to know how can they reach out to Papa Smokes? Where is the best place to find you, to talk to you, send you matches that you like? Let them know. I am on Elon Musk's $8 free speech platform known as Twitter. And I'm at smokes underscore Papa. I can also be found on Twitch at Papa underscore smokes underscore. And we're wearing the blue colored shirts tonight. Blue check mark. You're Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Uh, oh, playing yeah. This, playing this weekend in the gray cup, Papa Smokes. Your boy's going to take it again. Yeah, I believe in the guys. It's going to be tough, but uh, I believe in the guys, and uh, we can do it. <laughs> and like, I want to ask her throwing a little shade back at you there, Papa. So. <laughs> <laughs> if it does, if it does. Oh, just kidding. It's all good. Nothing but uh, love and appreciation for everybody. Uh, but, yes, we're going to be uh, heading on out. Uh, you know where you can check me out uh, down below. Uh, you can also uh, check me out on this Sunday with my good buddy Chris Parrish on Busting Out. I uh, might even jog, hop on sometime this weekend, whether it be right after Busting Out or something on Sunday, because there's something that I'm big into that is totally not wrestling related that I want to talk about this Sunday, and that is the start of the FIFA World Cup. I have been a lifelong soccer fan. I am a soccer player, but I've won many, many, many championships throughout my playing time, and I've also won many championships as a coach and a player coach as well, too. So I've taken this sport seriously. I've got my uh, I've got my provincial uh, coaching papers as well, too. I can coach up to adult uh, soccer and stuff like that officially within the province, uh, within Canada, if I'm not mistaken. But I want to talk about this tournament because it is a big tournament. Love the FIFA World Cup and be looking forward to doing that. Might even have somebody on screen with me, uh, another fellow coach or something like that, just to give you a breakdown of what's going to go down at the World Cup at Talk Soccer. Oh, okay. Sounds good, Munson. Did Canada have any chance in that? They finally uh, made it in, didn't they? They sure did. And you know what? I'm going to talk about that for a minute here. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of what I know. Uh, Canada is going to be very underestimated. And don't underestimate them. Don't sleep on Canada's team. Because finally, they made it, not only made it on their own accord, but they made it in style. They topped their group when they went through. They are coming into this thing with some tough competition within their rounds. But don't count them out. They not only have a strong team 
uh, throughout the midfield and stuff like that. But Jonathan David, the striker for Canada, is a nationally, a worldwide known striker, playing currently in the top leagues in France uh, and very well being marked for possible uh, run in England coming up as well soon too. So we have a very, very strong team with players that are playing all over the world for top clubs around the world. Canada is not one to sleep on. They're going to be dangerous, but clearly the biggest one going into this thing, a lot of people have their eyes on the Brazilian team. The Brazilian team is looking very sharp going into this year's World Cup. They're going to be a force to reckon with. Yeah, they're always a favorite. Hey, around the top of the seating. So, uh, oh boy, we got ourselves. It was, when does it all start then? Uh, I believe Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, the 20th, I believe, is kickoff. And today's 17th, 18th. So, yeah, Sunday it will be the first oh official game. I believe that, I can't remember. I know it's the host country, Qatar. And I believe it might be Ecuador or somebody along those lines that are going to be kicking off the festivities on Sunday. And then we're going to be getting the full-blown matchup starting on Monday there. I believe Canada's first match is either Monday or Tuesday, so we'll have to look out for that and uh, tune in as well, too. I'm very, very excited. I love the sport. I'm very dedicated to it, both uh, in league level as well as the national level. So very much looking for that. <laughs> Etchie Wuji hates the Brazilian soccer team. I mean, <laughs> I... I, I like a lot of their players. I, I'll say that they got some good people over there and some very skilled talent. Um, I, I still I'm rooting Canada. I, I've always been an England guy because, of course, my family comes from England originally too. They moved to uh, they moved to Canada from England. So uh, I've always been an England guy. So rooting for England. But again, I got to root for Canada. I mean, I I got to be there to support the team that nobody thought would ever make it, and it's about time they did. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they can pull off in this year's World Cup. It's going to be absolutely fun. I don't know how I'm going to fit in all this fun and excitement all the time with so much going on between soccer and wrestling. But, hey, I, I don't sleep. I'm a man who doesn't sleep, so it's going to be worth it. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of footy matches to watch uh, as well as wrestling matches. Yeah, you bet. I, I'll probably have to have dual screens going while I'm sitting here doing some PPW editing at the same time. So it's going to be a, a busy few weeks here for Bobby as we head into the uh, Christmas season. Uh, but yes, that is going to be it for us here today, Papa Smokes, on Fusion. I want to thank you for joining me on screen. As always, thank everybody who supported us in the chat here tonight and who continue to support us week after week. Uh, if you get an opportunity, let everybody know about the show. Show them the replay of this particular episode and let them know that you love Evo w fusion and that you love fusion with the video bros each and every thursday night so that's going to be it for us and yes uh, we got astrid say good night fellas good night astrid we'll probably come and stop by to say hello in your show here right away and anti wuji thanks guys great show as always thank you for the love and support as well too we love all of you and appreciate you coming by each and every thursday night and next thursday as we said the open invitation on the table to come join the video bros in whatever capacity you want. Let's get this chat hopping next week as we party for MLW on Thanksgiving. But until then, we will see you next Thursday. Take care, everyone.